two, one, and... Action. Go. Go. <laughs> Anti-submissiveness, defiance, egotism, <laughs> all these demons <laughs> work with rejection and leviathan. So to, I'd like to apologize in advance. We have quite a few verses today. Oh, my little fingers are tired. <laughs> I sent them out to Sally and she went, is that all? <laughs> so, before we go any further, we need to have a look at what a demonic kingdom is. A demonic kingdom inside a human being. Now, Satan has granted certain high-ranking demons a kingdom of their own operating under him. And it's a fact <coughs> that our personality, each one of us, has a number of areas. And when a demon enters somebody, for whatever reason, and say that there isn't a demon operating <coughs> in a particular area of a person's um, personality, say, for example, their sexuality, that demon will work over time to get that person to do things which will allow other demons of that type to enter into that person. It doesn't mean that because somebody has demons of a particular type that they've done whatever it is. It's just there's demons there waiting to get that person to do whatever it is. Mm. And this group of demons operating in that area of your personality is called a kingdom. <coughs> And these demons will try to build up that kingdom and pass it on down the generations. Now pride, <coughs> pride is a very, very stubborn demon 
that shows up in almost every demon kingdom. It is stubborn, but God is even more stubborn in his desire to set you free from demonic bondage. That's what he wants to do, set you free. And in Job 41, pride manifests itself as Leviathan. And it's important to recognise and deal with pride in your life. Because pride <coughs> brings destruction and a curse. Psalms 119, verse 21. You rebuke the proud, the proud who cursed, who strayed from your commandments. And pride sometimes causes sickness. Now who would have thought that? You could be ill because of your pride. Psalm 33, verse 19. <coughs> Man is also just chastened, chastened, never get a word out, you know, <laughs> with pain on his bed and with strong pain in many of his bones. So your pride can cause illness as well. And the king of pride is Leviathan. He's a very nasty piece of work. And it's surprising, surprising how often he's encountered in the deliverance ministry. Job 41 gives a description of him and it shows just how powerful he is and how important it is that we know as much as we can about him when we see God devoting a whole chapter to giving us information about him. As you'll see, Leviathan is involved in a lot of areas but he can be beaten. It's not yeah. easy to beat him. He's a tough opponent, and once you meet him, you won't forget him. <coughs> but he can be beaten with the help of warrior angels. The warrior angels, they're the bruisers. It's like they go in the gym and they're there, <laughs> wait all day long, and they're there with their swords and learning fighting techniques. That's all they do. It's all like gladiators, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> and when it's... When they call down for a scrap, they love it. Come on, boys, let's get them. Let's show those demons. Let's show them whose boss is not them. That's right. People have seen warrior angels. I tell you what, they said, I'm glad they're on my side. They've been scared of them, even though they're on the same side. What's that tell you? So, what does, <coughs> the, what does Leviathan do? Well, experience shows us that one of his jobs is to block deliverance. Mm -hmm. Many of the pastors who refuse to allow deliverance, <coughs> many of the pastors who refuse to allow deliverance are being con controlled by the Viathan. Unfortunately, they fight deliverance so they rarely deliver themselves. An image given of the image <coughs> no, we're doing this today. The image given in Job is taken from a crocodile that inhabits the river Nile in Egypt. Job 41, 15 to 16. <coughs> his rows of scales are his pride, shut up tightly as with a seal. One is so near another <coughs> that no air can come between them. And the Viathan is so proud of his scales, they're like that. They're so tightly sealed, no air can come between them. Nothing can penetrate them. In scripture, air represents the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Viathan attempts to block the flow <coughs> and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, people who are proud can hinder the Holy Spirit's flow. So key to operating in the power of the Spirit is humility. Mm -hmm. How many people here would say, I'm humble enough? <laughs> mm. no. if, if you said I'm humble enough, wouldn't that be pride? Yeah. I'm so proud of my, hum my um, humility. Mm. I'm so proud that I'm humble. Mm. <clears throat> so, Key to operating in the power of the Spirit is humility. Leviathan looks after himself first, second and last. 
He's self-preserver. His scales are his pride. He protects himself with his scales, with this armor. Proud people close themselves off and hide behind the scales of pride. They don't know they're doing it. He's working there behind the scenes, operating through people. They just don't know what they're doing. But because of the effect of Leviathan's tight coils around them, victims are so closed in and choked that the moving of the Holy Spirit is inhibited. They can neither hear nor discern the Spirit. <coughs> Therefore, they never get a word from the Lord nor do they move in the gifts. And the reason is that no air of the Spirit is able to get in because of this demonic stranglehold. The scales are joined together, they cannot be ripped apart. Job 41 verse 3 Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Supplication is prayer. And it's something the Vayathan tries to block. He tries to attack prayer ministries. Mm -hmm. Have we ever found <coughs> you start to pray, you are thinking, yes, I'm going to go for this now. And all of a sudden you become tired, you fall asleep. Or your mind wanders to something else, and you freshen up. Now this can be connected to the Vayathan. And pride can make us try to do God's work and that our own strength. It doesn't work that way. Rely on God for guidance and he will achieve whatever it is he wants to do through you. So when we pray, always pray with humility. That's the key word in defeating pride. Humility. So imagine the situation now. You're doing a deliverance. You find out you're up against the Vayathan. And he He's not to be nice to you unless he chooses to be. He can speak harshly to you. Make no mistake about it. Harsh words are another sign of Leviathan. He can and will speak to you that you are beneath his contempt, which to him you are. He's like his boot going, I can't freak you off my boot. Yeah. That's what he's like. He gets him scrape the scrapes and his mortal off my boot. Yeah. That's what he's like. If it suits him though, he'll be a right charmer if he thinks he can get away with it. So you have to put his harsh words, his charmingness, his compliments to one side. Just concentrate on getting the person delivered. Job 41 verse 2. Is hey. it? Oh, verse 21. Thank you. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta see, I, gotta see, I gotta see if you're on the ball of night. Job 42, verse 21. 41. 41. <laughs> his breath kindles coals and a flame goes out of his mouth. Now this means his words have a destructive, negative effect. Those under his power become very critical, especially of those in authority. They become judgmental and their words pull people down rather than lift them up. How many times have we seen people like that? Mm -hmm. How many times have we done that even? Mm -hmm. Job 41 verse 5 Will you play with him as a bird or will you leash him for you are made? <laughs> now remember, you can't play with pride. He's a dangerous spirit. Pride has to be renounced completely. Job 41 verse 8 Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle. Never do it again. Pride is strong in a person's life. And it's a tough battle to defeat it. Now when, not if, but when you encounter Leviathan, which you will do, <coughs> if you do deliverance, you'll never forget it. You'll never forget this battle. One minute he's charming, the next, he may be like a bear with a sore head. He's a wily, deceitful, cunning piece of work. Job 41. 
verse 22. Strength dwells in his neck and sorrow dances before him. He Leviathan is stiff necked and stubborn. Stubbornness and rebellion are good signs of Leviathan. If we look in the Old Testament, Israel were always called a stiff necked people. <coughs> and numerous times God judged them for their stubbornness and rebellion. Leviathan, Leviathan's neck is like that, it's huge and it's solid. And that's where his strength lies. And that makes it a nice target for deliverance workers, as we'll see later. Job 41, verse 24. His heart is, is as hard as stone, even as hard as the lower millstone. How many people have we saw over our lives who seem to be hard-hearted? They never show any kindness, any emotions, they just don't care about anybody. There's quite a few out there. And the way that may be the culprit behind them being that way. Because of its pride, the way that always wants to be in control. How many people like that have we seen? Mm. Even when they got no authority, no position, they think they can tell people what to do. People under Leviathan's influence want to control other people. They resist submission to true spiritual authority. He always mocks people who are walking in obedience to God's will. Why do you disagree with them? Cause arguments for the fun of it. Isaiah 27 verse 1. In that day, the Lord with his severe sword, great and strong, who punished Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that twisted serpent, and he would slay the reptile that is in the sea. So, when they call Leviathan, the Bible calls Leviathan a fleeing serpent and a twisted serpent. It doesn't mean he runs away. He runs away from no fight. He's cunning. Now, by that means I could say <coughs> something to, no, I don't know, Louise, for I say, innocently. By the time my words reach Louise, he's there waiting for them to arrive. And as soon as Louise hears the words, he's whispering in her ears, but they mean something totally different to what I, to what I mean. And she'll say something back to me, eh? completely innocent, so nice, sweet, by the time it gets to my ears, he's whispering in my ears. The fleeing serpent means he's fleeing to the next person. And twisting serpent means he's twisting the words. He's twisting into something hurtful and offensive to cause bad feeling and an argument. And so because he, <coughs> because he does this, marriages are broken up and even murders have been committed. All because of the Viathan. It's a difficult demon to deal with because it twists the truth. It causes people to believe <coughs> the opposite of what the person speaking meant. He blinds people to the truth. And in fact, people under his influence can be so deceived they just can't see that they are under his influence. Now, he works in quite a few areas. One is learning difficulties with young people, including causing reading difficulties. And we find that almost everyone in certain families will have learning difficulties to varying degrees. And this is down to the way of an entering the family through a generational curse. Now, as I always say, breaking a curse is simple, there's nothing to it. In this case, you just say, I do break the curse of Leviathan back to 10 generations on both sides of the family and destroy any legal rights or ground which give <coughs> evil spirits reason to operate 
I destroy all these in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. That simple to break a curse. But as you battle with the life, and you'll see where scripture declares him to be a wily foe and a nightmarish monster. His description is so frightening, it's probably a good thing we can't see him face to face. He doesn't sound like anything we're going to meet in the dark alley, in the dark night, or even in the daylight. It's almost impossible to attack. He's so powerful, so ghastly looking. Our enemies are paralyzed at the mere sight of him. We don't go into this conflict against the life then, as natural men, women. Don't make that mistake. But we can succeed because of the supernatural power we have in Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Excuse me? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. That was my Oh, sorry. I told you it wasn't enough. Yeah, you did say it was. Fuck it. I ain't going. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. By attacking from the third heaven, high above Satan, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, world rulers, and every other angelic rank, we are able to prevail. We can beat them. And when you're doing a deliverance, the virus and the vitamins there under attack, you can expect a determined resistance. He'll often manifest with twisted snake and winding of the person's head, body, and limbs. You look and think, what on earth is going on here? What's this? But you know, though, once a person has been delivered of the Leviathan, you can expect a, a huge change in outlook and approach to spiritual growth. Many people report a clearing of confusion and a greatly, <coughs> a greatly increased ability to read and retain the Word of God. Following the long, detailed description of this monster, tongue in cheek, God asks, if you'd like to make a pet of him? Anybody here like to make a pet of Leviathan? Mm. You boy, come on Leviathan, come on boy, come on. Catch my ball, catch my ball, fetch my. Yeah. yeah, you can do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like taking a Tyrannosaurus Rex home for the pet. Come on boy, I'm walking on the yeah. street. Can you imagine that? I think a Tyrannosaurus Rex would be a far better pet. But you know, if we could see these demons and these powers we attack, we'd appreciate even more the superior power given to us by God. Not only, <laughs> not only can we confront them, but we can attack them with impunity. And this explains their fear and anger, their fury, their rage. Oh, believe me, there's something. When you see a demon in a rage, you know. They hiss at you, threaten you, maybe even threaten to kill you. And they go <laughs> and they were nuts. And if they could kill you on the spot, they would. You see that, didn't you, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they, they'll do anything. They'll threaten you, anything. Good fun to watch. No. <laughs> Good fun to do. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a lot more I could say about the Leviathan, but I can't cover it all today. But I can, honestly, I can't do it you strongly enough. Learn as much about the Leviathan as you can. It's that important. Now, you probably have the impression that, my oh, mother said, he's powerful, can't beat him. Yeah, he can be beaten, all right. And I'm, to be honest, I'm a chill for a scrap with him. And what's more, the weapons we can use, God has given us weapons. <coughs> and then Job 41. You'd be surprised, things like binding and loosening won't work. He's that powerful. They just bounce off him like they're nothing. 
And also, I thought, right, I, well, I believe God wants, wanted me to cover the Leviathan today because people attack him with normal spiritual warfare weapons and it's like just bounce off their nothing. Now, the best way to, to defeat the demon of pride is humiliate it. Make an example of it. Why is it so, special thing? Oh, yes. <laughs> <coughs> so, now every demon that gets delivered has to go report back to Satan. And the best thing to do is humiliate it. So when demons look at it, they go, oh, look, look, at, look at the mess of him. Who's done that to him? Oh, it's that best a lot. But I'm not going there. I'm going to keep away from them. And that way, when I find out who did it, you will develop a reputation in the spirit world. And demons will not want to mess with you. One way or another, you will develop a reputation. It can either be as a wimp or can be as a warrior. It's your choice. Wimp or warrior. It's so powerful, usual weapons are binding loose in won't work. We would find it difficult to defeat them. But our friends, our buddies, the warrior angels don't find it difficult at all. And there's weapons we can't use, they can. If we look, there's weapons in Job 41, we look at them, we think, no, no, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. But we can. We can't use these weapons. Angels can use them instead. Hallelujah. Now, if we look at Job 41, verse 1, it says, can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? or snare his tongue with a line which you lower. So we can direct angels to put a hook through his nose and pull him out. That's going to be painful. And to make it hurt more, you can have an angel put a hook in his tail, pull him both ways. Have a few angels pull him both ways. Put a rope through his tongue, pull his tongue down to the ground, make him lick dust, pour the blood of Jesus into his mouth. It humiliates him. It humiliates pride. Job 41 verse 7. Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Anybody know exactly what a harpoon is? Yeah, yeah Job. It's a strong spear with a barbed hook on the end of it. Close. It's um, everybody right. It's a spear attached to a long rope yeah. thrown by hand or by a gun when hunting whales or hunting other whales, large yes, sea right. creatures. Whales, right. So we can direct angels to throw harpoons at them, run into him, and rip, pull, pull him out, rip out pieces of his flesh, throw him in again, pull it out, and then to do things like. Direct holy fire into those wounds, or the blood of Jesus into the wounds. Mm. They can hurt them. And fishing spears, they can be used to throw at them, just leave them in. So when he goes back to Satan, with all his stuck in him, all his wounds, he's going to be humiliated. The king, the sons of pride, humiliated. Can I ask for that? Can I? Job 41, verse 13. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? We can't remove his outer coat. Angels can. Ask God to give them spiritual claws that dig deep into his scales, rip his scales off. His scales are his pride. So we dig away at his pride until he feels humiliated. That's the source of his pride. Rip him off. Pour the blood of Jesus on or holy fire onto him. A double bridle. What's that used for? It depends on the uh, class as a double bridle because sometimes a double bridle is, is a needle with the point is about both ends. Yeah, I, not that type. Oh, no, no, that's a bridle as well. <laughs> or it's a bridle that you put on the horse. Exactly. I, like, <laughs> I said a double. 
Watch every brain. Like, I'm not watch it. Still still <laughs> That's why I said it's not. Stay in the corner. Stay in the corner. A double bridle is used to control the horse. It's put over the horse's head, the bit goes through the horse's mouth, that way the rider can control the horse. We can ask angels to put a double bridle over the rider's head, the bit through his mouth, control him. Who oh, does like that? Job 41 verse 14. Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around him? Oh, this is one of my favourites. To use this in case any demon. We can ask God to equip angels with spiritual sledgehammers. Smash the violent's teeth out. Keep going till he doesn't have a single tooth left. Then tell angels and smash his cheekbones. Keep going and going and going. As I said, smash his cheekbones, rip his scales off, harpoons into him, spears into him. Job 41 verse 22 Strength dwells in his neck and sorrow dances before him. As I've said earlier, the strength is in his neck. It's huge, it's thick, it's solid. So you lose angels to batter his neck with claws, rip the scales off, harpoons, keep smashing his neck with sledgehammers until it weakens. Eventually it will. And when you see the person becoming less and less proud, then you know it's working. So there's quite a few weapons, isn't there? I could really go on and on, to be honest, but I won't go on with too many more, though. It's, uh, Job 41, verse 28. The arrow, that's all right, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> the arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones become like stubble to him. So can have, they, we can fire arrows into the Vietnam, or angels can. They can fire stones from a sling. It's not that type of thing, put it back like that. It's a sling like they did, swing around and poof, the stones go. Job 41, verse 29. Darts are regarded as straw. He laughs at the threat of javelins. He may laugh at us throwing darts or javelins into him, but he doesn't laugh at spiritual javelins. Have angels throw darts into him? Make sure that darts and javelins are dipped in the blood of Jesus. To make him walk across red hot pointed rocks, glass, and any sharp pointed objects you can think of. And this is one of my favourites, finally. Job 41, verse 31. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. To have the angels to put him in a big massive pot and boil him in the blood of Jesus. Mm. Oh, we hate that with a passion. There's other things we can do. Now the Viathan has seven heads. To have angels chop all his heads off, or just leave one on. So you can use that to batter that head into submission. The one thing we always have to do is listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If we suspect we go to encounter the Leviathan, always fast and pray. He's cunning. He's powerful. He's hard to beat. He can't be, he can't be beaten through the power and authority Jesus has given us. Amen. And if we encounter him, <coughs> Never give up, no matter how hard it looks. Don't go by with the peers, go according to how it is. By using the weapons I've mentioned today, he will be beaten. Humiliate the king of the sons of pride. Send him back to Satan with his head down, tail between his legs. And yeah. Good for him. I can see that. How'd you go? Yeah, yeah. Down there. <laughs> 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 That's what we're doing, you know, I don't mind. I'm okay. <laughs> If it's humiliating the king of pride, I'll do it. I don't care. 
Just remember, any tema can be beaten. Mm. Any tema. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter whether it's the Leviathan, the Queen of Heaven, Queen of the Coast, they can all be beaten. All right. But you have to prepare first. I have a question. Yes. What's Queen of Heaven, please? Right. <coughs> the Queen of Heaven. Because that might confuse people as we're talking about God thinking, I've got to be in Yeah, so they can see that. That's a word, that's a word. Right, the Queen of Heaven is another extremely high ranking demon. This demon is number two in Satan's kingdom. At the top of Satan's kingdom is like a pyramid structure. He's on top, and then next you got the next layer of demons, the next one, the next one. Or if you work up, each one is more powerful and has, and has more authority than the one below it. The Queen of Heaven is number two to Satan. It was number three and Leviathan was number two, but Leviathan has been demoted to number three and the Queen of Heaven is now number two. The Bible tells us, I can't remember chapter or verse, that somewhere, sometime at the end, uh, <coughs> Leviathan will be promoted back to number two and the Queen of Heaven back to number three. But I don't know when. It's going to happen sometime or other. But it's number two in Satan's kingdom. Thank you. It's okay. No worries. Yeah. My pleasure. So remember, no more demon up against 